This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 785 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by Wintech Saddles, featuring the Easy Change Fit Solution. Hi, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is an excerpt from the Driving Radio Show, episode number 92. Dr. Wendy Ying talks about how laser therapy can help with proud flesh. The humorous interjections are provided by Glenn the Geek. And we'll get to our tip right after this important message from Wintech. Too many riders know the frustration that comes from their saddle not fitting or no longer fitting. Many hours and many more dollars are often spent trying to compensate for a poor fit or buying another saddle, only to have the same thing happen again months later. Enter the Easy Change Fit Solution, available on Wintech Easy Care Saddles. By combining the Easy Change gullet system introduced over 15 years ago with the new Easy Change riser system, Wintech now offers an unparalleled scope of adjustment for a total fitting solution that's not only easy, but measurable, giving total confidence to be able to make changes to the saddle. Whether you're a serious competitor or ride horses for the sheer joy of it, Choose a saddle with the Easy Change Fit Solution that puts your horse's comfort first. Enjoy the peace of mind in knowing that your saddle offers full adjustability and is able to meet the changing needs of your horse. Find out more today at EasyChangeFitSolution.com. Did I was I dramatic enough? Yes. Did you play the gong? Yeah, I, oh yeah, it's already played. We're good. Okay. <laughs> well, Glenn, today. Do you want me to play another gong? Do you need two <laughs> yeah. gong? Are you a two gonger today? Yeah, you're a gong. <laughs> she wants a twenty-one gong salute before she starts now. Jeez. I'm, I'm feeling all military. <laughs> <laughs> um, but today is is uh, something that we're going to talk about that isn't technically Chinese medicine, but it's a piece of equipment that I use all the time in my practice. And it's a laser. And Glenn, you being a geek, do you know what laser stands for? Uh, no. <laughs> I was trying to make something up, but I haven't even got anything. I got nothing. Well, L, you can guess that L stands for light, right? So yeah. a laser is a, is a concentrated beam of, of light of photons. So it's light amplification by stimulated emission radiation. Well, <laughs> okay. So, well, yeah. I didn't know it had it. I didn't know it meant anything. Yeah. And it's actually just because, um, it, it, lasers actually came or came about in the 1960s. So they actually haven't been around for very long, but that word has just, um, from sci-fi movies and, and books and things has just gotten into our, our colloquialism. And, Thank you um, to Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, due to Star Trek, laser beam. So, so, uh, but basically, that's a whole mouthful of stuff. And what does that mean? It just means it's a concentrated beam of light. And many lasers are certain wavelengths. And um, This is the part where I start to get lost, to be honest no, with you. No, you like this. You're a science guy. No, I meant the wavelengths. That's the part where it confuses me. Oh, the wavelength is easy to understand. So wavelength, you just imagine like a wiggly line, right? Yeah. And the number, like the, the wavelength, it, it's the, like the, the length of it, right? The, it, it's uh, easy to understand. Look, I'm not explaining it very well. <laughs> but like say, for example, our visible spectrum of light is between like 400 and 600 nanometers, Right? Okay. So centimeters is the length of the wave from the dip to the dip, right? Okay. The trough to the trough. So, so that is the wavelength. And, and like gamma rays in space, you know, the, the gamma rays which change the, 
the David Banner into the Incredible Hulk, those are really long <laughs> waves from trough to trough. That's why they can travel farther and they they can penetrate farther. So the longer your wavelength, the deeper they can penetrate. Okay. The shorter the wavelength, the, the, the least they can penetrate. And like UV light is short, infrared light is long. So like uh, the light from a light bulb is short. It right. doesn't it's, penetrate anything. It's just Well, and also the light from a light bulb is visible. Okay. Right, it's in the visible spectrum. So the lasers that we use in therapy are, are near infrared, meaning they're just outside of our visible spectrum. And lasers also, um, the reason that they're, they can be cutting lasers versus therapeutic lasers, they're, they're on a different wavelength. So the cutting lasers tend to excite the molecules of water in the tissue, and that's what causes the cutting. Okay. Right? So those are surgical lasers. So the laser that I use is a, um, it has a different wavelength that just penetrates the tissue, and it actually stimulates the, uh, what they're called chromophores. That means it's their, their, their pigmented structures in the cells. So technically, then a treatment laser is going to have a is going to have a longer wavelength than a cutting laser. Well, the cutting laser actually has a longer wavelength. Oh, okay. Yep, I had it Sorry. backwards. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but that's why also you have to be careful because the the therapeutic benefits they affect the inside of the cell, right? But you have to be careful where you apply it. Like you don't want to treat the eye. Obviously, that's why we wear these dark glasses because it will penetrate. There, there's all these pigmented structures in the eye, right? You don't want to damage the back of your retina, which has some pigmentation. So, and, and then the cutting lasers, you have to make sure you have uh, the right wavelength on your cutting laser because you don't want to uh, um, you don't want to damage the the other tissues. You just want to be right at that certain wavelength so that you can cut through the tissue. And and the depth of it too is that determined by the wavelength. Otherwise, you're just cutting the thing in half. Right. Yeah. You have to be very careful about the depth, and that's how you uh, you can affect it's the wattage, the power of your laser. Okay. That's why there's all different types of lasers too. There's the class, and and they're the, they're based on class, um, and it's kind of scary sometimes when you think about it, but. The class um, ratings are on how much you can damage somebody with your laser. So, like class right. one, <laughs> it's safe, right? That's like a it, the laser that's in your CD player. If we had CD players anymore, you know. But um, uh, and then the class two is a little bit stronger. Class three that's split into two different classes. They're relatively safe. They don't penetrate that much. They can't generate that much uh, power. They only go up to like 500 milliwatts of power or something. Um, and then the class four laser, which is what we use in medical therapy, it generates more power. It can go deeper into the tissue. Um, and so your treatment times are much shorter. So like technically I could use a class three laser. And that's what sometimes you see sold as like a handheld therapeutic laser. Right. But the thing is to treat horses, especially like to get to the depth that you need and the uh, and the amount of tissue you have to treat, you'd have to be there for like 20 minutes on a point. And, and who has time for that? It, we're, today we're talking about proud flesh. And let's just remind everybody what proud flesh is, and then we'll talk about how, how, how you treat it with the laser. Okay, yeah. So proud flesh is um, granulation tissue in horses. Right, so horses. And it occurs are, when, when they get uh, a big wound, and you know you sometimes see horses that have like this big chunk out of their body, and think, oh my god, that how is that going to happen? In horses, uh, they do produce a lot of granulation tissue to fill in these deep wounds, um, and so that's a normal healing process of horses. However, proud flesh is when it overgrows and then the skin can't grow on top of it. So it has a very um, increased blood supply. It's a lot of like uh, undifferentiated cells, right? It's just a lot of fibroblasts. So it looks I, hard and bumpy. Yeah, it's hard and bumpy. It just yeah. looks gross. Um, but there's not a lot of organization there. So it's, it's basically like a, a scaffold 
for the other, the, the skin and the collagen and everything to grow back in. So with the laser, what we do is the laser um, increases, like I said, it, it stimulates the, the mitochondria of the cells. So it increases the energy in this, that's the little engine inside the cell. So it increases the metabolism of the cell so that the wound healing can happen faster. Usually they say it, it's about 30% faster in most wounds when you treat it with the laser, with enough photons. So that's another thing you have to do. You have to make sure you're getting enough light therapy there to institute a change. So what it does is it breaks down those, the hard, crunchy cells uh, and then uh, and allows it to heal again better in a more uniform manner? manner? Yeah, technically it's not breaking down those those bad cells. Okay. Okay? It's It's stimulating the body's immune system, right? Your white blood cells to chomp up those bad cells. Okay. And then the good cells can come in. The epithelium, which is the skin, can come in faster. So if you have like a big, huge hunk of proud flesh um, that's actually like a big cauliflower mass that's way above your skin, um, because a lot of times you get... M- Proud flesh can get can overgrow from flies or a lot of motion. So if you have one on on a joint or something, sometimes that gets too severe. Then that would do well with debridement. So surgically cutting off a lot of that extra granulation tissue. And like I said before, it doesn't have any nerves in it. It's um it's just a lot of uh like you know fibroblasts and and blood cells uh, blood. Uh, vascularization so you can cut that off then laser it and then you'll have a nice uh, wound contracture so when you do this with the laser it does you said it doesn't have nerve cells does it hurt the horse at all is there any pain involved there's not any pain involved but one of the things you have to be careful with the laser is it does generate heat in the body so you have to keep it moving all the time you know, so I kind of wave the, the laser over the area and I make sure that the cell's not getting, the, the skin's not getting too hot. And is this one of the best treatments for, for uh, proud flesh? It is one of the best treatments. In the past, we had used um, like caustic agents like copper sulfate or um, granulex spray. Have you ever used the granulex? Mm-hmm. Years ago. Yeah, and it, 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 the thing is about the caustic agents, they do work and they do debride the tissue. But don't but get them it, on anything around it. Yeah, it, <laughs> so. it damages the, the new baby cell right. coming in there. So the thing that's good about the laser is that it, can, uh, it, it, can, it helps the immune system get rid of the proud flesh, but it also supports the new epithelium coming in. Huh. And then another thing I would do with the laser, too, is I would also use it. I use it all the time for acupuncture. Really? Yeah. So I would um, also support the immune system or whatever the underlying cause is with uh, acupuncture points. Like, say, um, this proud flesh is on a certain meridian. I might treat the beginning and end of both of those meridians to help to help the, um, that body stay in balance. And the reason that I like acupuncture laser treatments is, is, is less painful. Like some horses don't like needles. And, you know, if you've been treating this proud flesh for like, you know, two months before you call your vet, you know this horse is like, he doesn't want to be touched yeah, there. Yeah, he's sick of you by this point. <laughs> <laughs> sick of <Yeah>. everything. <laughs> Give him carrots, wave the laser around. And so they don't even feel like it's a treatment. It's a very non-painful treatment. And with the laser, you can also go very deep. So if I have to do any points in the in the hind end of the horse, um, you know, sometimes I use a six inch needle to get in there around the hip area. But with the laser, I can actually get in deep there without having to put the giant needle in. Six inch needle. Yep. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck! You know, I would I would go screaming the other way if I was the horse. I know, and sometimes with my squeamish patients, yes, the laser is better than the six-inch needle. (laughs) Do you have more trouble with the owners wanting to pass out than the horses? Sometimes, sometimes I do get to (laughs) Um, Especially like I talked about before, the hemoacupuncture that we do with uh, um, non-sweating the most. uh, 
So that is usually um, very dramatic. And if I have any owners that don't really like blood, I tell them maybe to go. <laughs> go get a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go get a coffee. <laughs> but, uh, but laser has really been an important therapy in my practice. And, uh, you know, I think it really, even though it's a very modern treatment, I think that it goes very well with the, my philosophy of, of whole body healing. Great. Well, that's uh, laser treatment for proud flesh. Thank you, Dr. Ying, for joining us again and for finally getting back to work. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you have to whip me into shape, Glenn. All right. Send a bill. And that's a wrap. For more tips on horse health, you can go to horsetipdaily.com and look for the topics drop down menu on the left. If you just can't get enough of Dr. Ying and Glenn the Geek, you can listen to them every week at drivingradioshow.com. And for more fascinating information about Chinese medicine and laser therapy, you can stop by Dr. Ying's website, 5 animalscom Use the digits, don't spell it out. Don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they make these podcasts possible. Today's tip has been brought to you by the good folks at Wintech Saddles, featuring the new, improved, and even better than ever, Easy Change Fit Solution. My Wintech Saddle has it, and yours should too. Go to easychangefitsolution.com to learn more. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover on the show. You can subscribe to all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or MP3 player. You can also listen to the shows right on Facebook. The player's right there every day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse! The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.